Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate the REST enabled SQL functionality in Oracle REST Data Services. REST enabled SQL allows REST calls to send DML, DDL, and scripts to any REST enabled schema. It can do this because ORDS contains the same SQL engine used in SQL Developer and SQL CL. Before we start, I think it's important to stress this functionality shouldn't be used as your main approach to REST enabling your database. Instead, I think it serves two purposes. It allows you to automate maintenance tasks using REST calls, and for Application Express developers, it frees them from the issues associated with database links. Apex understands REST enabled SQL, so you can work on a remote table just as easily as a local table. We create a test user called test user1 and grant it the create session and create table privileges. We connect to the new user and enable ORDS for the schema. We assign the base path of HR. This is a schema alias used in the web service URLs, which lets ORDS know it's dealing with objects in the test user1 schema. To enable REST enabled SQL, we need to edit the defaults XML file in the ORDS installation. The location of this will depend on your installation. In my case, it's located in this directory. We need to add the REST enabled SQL active entry and set it to true. It's a good idea to limit the output in case someone sends a query that returns billions of rows and kills your system. By default, this functionality is only available over HTTPS, but for testing purposes, you can allow access over HTTP with this setting. Please don't do this for anything real. REST enabled SQL uses a plain text password, so sending that over an unencrypted connection is a disaster waiting to happen. After making the changes to the defaults XML file, we need to restart ORDS. I'm running ORDS on Tomcat, so I have to restart Tomcat. Once ORDS is restarted, we're ready to begin. The pattern for calls to REST enabled SQL is always the same. The only thing that changes is the payload sent to the call. We use a HTTP POST method to make the call. We use a URL up to and including the schema alias. We add underscore slash SQL to the URL to indicate this is a REST enabled SQL call. We use basic authentication using the database username and password, which is why HTTPS is so important. We could also use conventional basic authentication, provided the user were granted the SQL developer role. We set the content type header to Application SQL. We are now ready to define a body or payload. In the first example, we'll just use a really simple SQL statement. In the output, we see an item array with a single item that was processed. We see it was a query. The statement itself is included. We have a result set. This includes the metadata about the output columns as well as the data. Let's try something a little more complicated. Remember, the rest of the call definition is always the same, only the payload changes. In this case, we have a script to create and populate the departments and employees tables. The items array contains one entry for each statement we ran. DDL and DML have similar output format. The statement is presented along with the feedback after running the statement. For the first statement, we see the type DDL, we see the create table statement, and the feedback to say the table was created. We have similar output for the next table. And for each insert, we see a type of DML, the insert statement, and then the feedback to say the row's been inserted. With those tables in place, we can run a query against them. Once again, we have the same basic call definition with a different payload. Here we're asking for a comma-separated list of employees for each department. The output includes a result set with the metadata associated with the output as well as the data. 
We see each department that has employees along with the comma separated list of employees for that department. There's an article linked in the description box that includes lots of different examples of how REST enabled SQL can be used. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.